Welcome back. As always, please leave a comment down below if you have anything to add to this conversation or any of the conversations that I have in any of my videos because that is really why I make these videos is to have conversations with you guys. So please continue the conversation down in the comments or if you have any comments about the channel in general because I'm always looking for improvement and those comments, you know, I take to heart. I, I do try to improve based on them. So please just let me know because it helps me out a ton. Um, also, finally, be sure to check out my other channel, YC Games. It's one with the orange logo. And before we actually get into the video, just a little bit of a kind of side note. Um, I only watched the gameplay from Gearbox, like on that huge stage thing. I didn't have a chance to go through and watch any of the other live streams that, that were recorded uh, because I was actually working at the time that all was was live, and it pissed me off. So I, I did like went back and watched like the record of it. Uh, but I only watched the Gearbox stream. I didn't watch anyone else's. Uh, so all this information is based just off of that. I do want to go through and at least watch a couple more. Just to get a couple other people's perspective of it. Um, and I'll be covering basically all of these topics in future videos in the 10 part series that I'm doing. I'm going to continue that. And just going to add that information uh, to those videos. So you'll probably hear me talk about a lot of things in this video that I will talk about in the future anyway. But this is just my initial reactions after watching the gameplay. Um, I'm going to avoid a lot of stuff about guns because my next uh, video in that 10 part series is the guns. Uh, so yeah, be sure looking out for that. Hopefully uh, first part of next week, thinking like Monday, Tuesday, possibly Sunday. Uh, but yeah, hopefully get that part. So if you have anything to add, like anything that you thought was really cool about the guns in this gameplay or in the trailers or whatever, let me know and I'll be sure to include that in the video. And without further ado, let's just let's get into it now. So as I watched the video, uh, I wrote down notes about all the things I thought were noteworthy and all the things I noticed. Uh, so this video will be just kind of in that order of stuff I noticed. So it may not seem logical why I'm saying the things when I say them, but these are just kind of the things I noticed in order and my thoughts on them and why. <laughs> as you know, if you've seen any of my other videos, I was extremely excited for Borderlands 3. But after that reveal, I, I, I'm, I'm beyond. Like that, Honestly, that gameplay looked better than I could have hoped. And I'm trying not to get my hopes too... I'm trying not to get my hopes too high. But, oh man, after that gameplay, I, I am... I'm ready. I'm ready. Let, let's play it right now. But that being said, so this video, may it may not seem like kind of in any particular order. Uh, this is just the stuff I noticed, stuff I wrote down. So I'm just going to go right through it, basically in order of when I wrote it. So... It's going to sound a little out of place, it's going to be a little uh, here and there, but here we go. So right off the bat, Claptrap's voice is weird. <laughs> I know they got a different voice actor, and he doesn't sound terrible. Like I mentioned this uh, when I was talking about Borderlands 2 in VR, because I believe they used the same voice actor for that as well. The couple parts they had to add uh, to explain more of the VR aspects of it. Uh, they used the new voice actor, which, obviously. Uh, so I, I made note of it then. It's not bad. Like, it's not awful. It, it still is definitely Claptrap. But it, it's it's definitely off-putting. And it's going to take a while to actually fully get used to it. And Claptrap was present pretty pretty well throughout the at least the first part of uh, that, that demo they showed off. So I got used to it towards the end of watching it. But, ah, uh, man, it's, it, it took a little bit. And I'm sure when I actually get, you know, when the game actually comes out and I, I get to play it, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. That is one note, I think. Uh, sliding and mantling. Holy shit. That is something that... Uh, sorry, <laughs> pardon the language. Um, but, my God. Like, I remember like hearing that was a rumor that they were going to have sliding and mantling. But actually seeing it in action, working fluently, working with the combat. Because it's one of those things that it just makes sense for Borderlands. Because it's a fast-paced game. Like, even just regularly... There's a lot going on on the screen at one time. And now with the sliding and the mantling and all the other stuff they added, it's just going to be pure chaos. And I cannot wait for it. It is going to be beautiful. Because just that little extra bit of mobility offers so many more options. Take like, uh, let's just say Apex Legends. Just a game that came out recently, fresh in my mind. It's Obviously, it's not as uh, much of a sliding and it's not wall running in Borderlands 3. It's not like a slide. You can just slide down a huge hill in like seconds, like in Apex, it feels. Or it's not like wall running, we can like run straight up a wall. But just that much different mobility they added puts Apex above any other Battle Royale in my book. Just because the mobility is so much more fun. So the fact that they're 
obviously to a lesser degree to make it fit Borderlands a little better. But the fact that they are implementing more uh, diversity in being able to move around the battlefield and to move around the environment in general, that's going to be awesome. That That is one of the things I am most excited for. And that's saying something, because I'm excited for a lot of shit. Like breakable cover. That's one of those things. I kind of mentioned it in one of my previous videos, but I mentioned it more about uh, how I would be cool if the enemies interact with the environment more, like how the bully monks would like, break off ice chunks and throw it. I kind of wanted more of that. But now that we can break cover, and even like one of the, I want to say it was the trailer they released with the gameplay, uh, you can see like a boss like taking out a complete column. It's like, holy shit, that's environmental destruction. That's not just cover destruction. I'm excited for it. And speaking of the environment, interactable environments. Yes, I love this about games. Again, I mentioned this in, in previous videos, but now that I'm actually seeing it being interactable, like barrels you can just push out of the way, that's awesome. And, and shoot them and blow up. Oh, that, that's awesome. And like little hazards, like that oil slick they showed off. And there's like something on the side of a van that shot off that new radiation uh, elemental type, which I'll kind of mention a little bit more later. Uh, just stuff like that. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that just makes me excited for any game, let alone the fact that it's included in a Borderlands game just makes me that much more excited. But just kind of combine those two ideas, a little neat idea I had. I don't know if, I, I didn't see it in any of the gameplays, so I don't know if it's actually possible, but that'd be really cool to kind of combine those two. Like how they had that, you shoot and the oil slick kind of appears on the ground, and a movable barrel. I think it'd be cool, like you have like a, like a, uh, an incinerator barrel, right? Assuming it's full of oil, let's just assume that. You shoot that, it makes a bullet hole and it kind of starts pouring out. Then you kick it and like makes a trail with it. And then when it explodes, like lights the whole trail on fire. That, that was just one of those things where I'm like, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer putting those two ideas together. And I hadn't seen any of the gameplay, so I actually have no idea if it's possible. But that would be pretty neat if it was. If it's not possible, I mean, it's not too late to add it. <laughs> a little optimistic there, but... <laughs> Um, ground pound. It was kind of a weird thing to see because I wasn't sure exactly what I was seeing. Like at first, I thought it was like uh, the siren's ability because that's what it seems like one of the siren's abilities, like that AOE thing that they kind of mentioned. I thought that's what it was, but looking back, I watched it a second time. I think that's just a ground pound. Like they're getting her eyes kits, it seems. Which okay, but since they're still going for verticality, if you can like jump off a platform and st if you're up high enough, like if you jump from one level to another. If you're up high enough and you can still do a ground pound, I'm all for that. Because, honestly, like, I wasn't a fan of the Oz kits, but I was kind of a... I did like the ground pound aspect of uh, Tales, or, Tales from Borland, from the, from the pre-sequel. Excuse me for that. Because it was just another way to kill things. <laughs> Which sounds a bit insane, because it's Borderlands. There's lots of ways to kill things. But it was just it was something unique to the pre-sequel that I really liked. And... Even if they get rid of Oz kits, which, again, I kind of hope they do, because I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of that. But they keep that ground pound, it, even in that regard, like, even if you can only use it at certain times, like, if you're hit up in the air, like, it's, I don't know if they were hit up in the air, they like, just jumped really high. I wasn't exactly sure what happened at that time. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've seen the Gearbox gameplay. But, yeah, I, I, there definitely seems to be some kind of ground pound, even if it's just ability. And I'm all for that. NPCs being able to revive you. Now this this is really good because I play solo a lot because uh, me and my friends, you know, our schedules very rarely line up. So I play Borderlands by myself a lot, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, so when I go down and I have to kill someone, it can be a bitch sometimes. It'll be like one enemy that killed you halfway across the map. As soon as you die, he like runs behind cover and it's like, well, shit, then I'm, I'm dead now. So NPCs being able to revive you, it's one of those things that it seems like a no-brainer, but it is really good for that aspect. Plus, it makes the world feel more lived in. It's not just, you're the hero, you can do certain things, and all these just escort missions. Now that they actually can help, they can revive, they can fight. Like that whole fight with uh, when Lilith joined you and she had a gun, not only her siren powers. Oh, man, it's like, all right, she used to be a vault hunter, obviously, because she's playing like a vault hunter, not like, some, not like a person with siren powers. She had a gun. That's awesome. That was a side note. I didn't even write that down. I don't know why I didn't write that down because that was awesome. I, I should have wrote that down. But this is one of those things that makes the world feel more... I, I, I don't want to say the world more lived in because obviously it's lived in, but it, it actually makes sense for the world because why would it be only you and the other players can revive each other? These 
are actual characters in the game that have roles, they can do stuff like that too. So it makes sense. Uh, Valheim's being able to talk again. I'm torn on this. I've mentioned this a couple times. Um, I like how they did it in the Borderlands 2 DLC, the Headhunter packs, because it wasn't as prevalent. Um, it was actually like interesting things they had to say, and they were like different, it seemed. It wasn't just kind of odd quotes out of nowhere, which happened in the pre-sequel, it seemed. Like, they had it a lot in the front. Like, as soon as they started the game, they just kind of talked a lot, and then they didn't really talk for much, just kind of only key aspect, key story moments later on. So that was just off-putting, how they balanced it really weirdly. Um, in the demo they showed off, they only really talked a couple times, which I'm all for it if they have actually, like, fun, unique things to say. But if they're going to talk just for the sake of talking, like I said, if they, like, front-loaded it again, I, I'm not a fan. I don't, I don't like it. If they have funny things to say, if they all have unique things to say, then, yeah, I like it because it's actually a reason to go back and play as another person. Then, like, all right, that was funny. I didn't hear that the first time, obviously, because you're a different character. So, I'm torn on that. Three action skills. This is a rumor that I hoped was true. I don't think I'm, 100, I'm uh, very happy with how they're implementing it, though. Um, I do like how as soon as you get your skill, you get all three skills. You don't have to unlock them individually. That good call. But I'm not a huge fan of you having to go into a menu to switch between them. I was hoping you could switch on the fly. Like, have just one button, um, not tied to anything else. I don't know. Like, maybe if you, like, you you hold, like, let's say on just PlayStation, you hold L1, because, you know, L1 to use the ability. If you hold it, you'll kind of, like, cycle through it, like, open up the menu, it has all three, and you can select which one. Something like that. Because I'm not a huge fan of going to a menu to switch between every time. I'm assuming they did this for, uh, cooldown reasons, because I'm assuming each one will have its own cooldown. They won't all line up exactly, because obviously some are going to be more powerful than others and need a longer cooldown. So... I, I like the three skills. I like how you have them. I like how you can choose, like, even just the one or two you like and level up just those those ones. Because, like they even said during that gameplay, that, you know, you can have uh, three different sirens on your team, and each three can serve completely different roles. They can all be completely different. I really like that. That is a great idea. I am so happy they're doing that. However, I wish you could switch a little more on the fly, because... That would be even cooler to me. Like, let's say um, there's two skills I really like. And I'm not... Was it, was it Zane the one they said can have two active at the same time? Anyway, let's say, like, I'm the Siren. I really like that ground pound, or I like that area of effect, and I like the where she throws the projection. I really like both of those. I want to switch between them on the, on the fly. Because if I'm surrounded by enemies, boom, area of effect. If there's one guy far off, boom, send that thing out. I, I just wish I could switch between them <laughs> a little bit easier, you know, not just have to stick to one for a fight, then after a fight saying, okay, now I kind of want the other one back, and then switch back, you know. It's just a little pet peeve. I don't know if, it, I'm sure it's all balanced, and that's the reason they have it like that, but I kind of wish they would have implemented it a little bit differently. Radiation. I'm surprised they didn't actually, like, address this very much. They just kind of said, like, oh, yeah, that's new elemental type. Uh, it's radiation. Uh, if someone's affected by it and they die, then they explode and everyone else is affected by radiation. It's like, alright. Is that all it does? Is it like a poison? Does it kind of like still take away their health? Is it effective against certain other things? What about it? They didn't really talk much about that. So, I'm glad they had a new elemental because uh, I'm intrigued to, to see where they can go from it. But at the same time, I wish they would have actually talked about it a little more because I am I'm curious as to what it actually does. <laughs> that being said, Cryo's back. I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, that was one of those like kind of odd things they throw in there because you don't actually see it. And I don't know if it's it is actually Cryo Cryo, but they kind of mentioned um, when they're talking about the guns, which again I'm not really going to talk about the guns, but they're talking about the alternate firing modes. Uh, like, yeah, you can switch between uh, incinerary and freezing rounds just like that. Oh, freezing rounds, you say? So Cryo is back, which I'm a, I'm a fan of Cryo. I really like that. That was one of the better aspects of uh, the pre-sequel, in my opinion. I enjoyed it. Um, it's a little bit overused. Uh, like, you can find Cryo fairly often, it seemed. It felt like, for me at least, I don't know, maybe I just got lucky in my couple playthroughs. But, yeah. Oh, another thing super excited for is how they're handling co-op this time. Um... Loot sharing, I'm not a huge fan of. I get it. 
I, I understand. Because uh, like I said, I usually play solo, so I really don't care about that. But when I did play with friends, it was one of those things where if I play with them, I'm probably going to keep it classic mode of the loot sharing aspect because I enjoyed that part of it. Like if I got to a chest for my buddy, I'm like, hey, there's a pistol here. Oh, how good is it? Oh, it's pretty good. Never mind, you don't get a pistol anymore. Like, I'll just take it, you know? Stuff like that, you know, just being a dick to your friends. That was fun. And it was vice versa, you know, they always did it to me too. You know, that's just, that's how we played the game. It was really fun to steal loot from each other. But I would understand if you are playing with randoms, because I'm not one to really do that too much. Actually, at all, not for Borderlands, I've never done that. Um, but I could understand how that could get really annoying, because, yes, there are greedy bastards out there that will just take everything, even if they don't need it or want it. Loot scaling. This is another neat idea, how uh, the loot will scale to a player's level. That's a good thing, I think. Um, I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, but the one thing I'm really excited for is how the enemy level scales with it. This is so awesome for me and my friends. Because like I said, I don't play with them often. And it, it really sucks because I have like 15 accounts. That's a little dramatic. I'd say maybe 10. 10 different players right now on Borderlands 2 because I have like two or maybe three solo accounts one with my one buddy, one with my other buddy, one with a third buddy, one with just the two with two buddies, one with the other two buddies, one with all four of us, one you know I have so many accounts I have to keep track of which one's which and I always forget basically I go by level and that's just really annoying because like one time uh, me and two of my buddies were playing we started a new game and I really like my character I'm like alright you know I, I kinda I'll keep playing this then the next day me and one of them get on, and the other one didn't, and we're talking about going back to another account, and it's like, well, I kind of like the account we started yesterday, you know, I want to continue that. And it sucked, because then we lost the third guy, because we went on without him. So, this whole level sharing, or the enemy level scaling, how you can have like a level 25 and a 5 together with the same challenge, or same-ish level challenge, I guess. Um, still getting, still making it worth your while, still getting worthwhile loot, uh, and just fun for both you guys. I really like that because it was a pain whenever I was like, alright, let's continue this account. I don't really feel like using this account. I'll use my account that's five levels above and he'll just wreck everything. And I'm sitting there like, well, this is fun following you, watching the wreckage. This is this is fun for me. Oh, yeah. You know, so this is a very good idea. I am so glad they did this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Buying all ammo from a uh, vending machine instantly. I actually never buy ammo from vending machines, so this doesn't really affect me. But it's a good idea. I, I'm glad that they implemented this because I'm sure people do buy from vending machines. So that, that's that's a good idea. It's definitely good on them for adding it. That lost loot thing in Sanctuary 3, another good idea. Because there have been times where I've, I've seen something like above a rock. I'm confused as to how it will work. Like, is it just anything on the ground after, like, boss fights or in general? Or, because I feel like you could, because I leave a lot of stuff on the ground. Don't, because, you know, there's a lot of loot in the game. I'm not going to pick everything up if I don't want it. So, I'm just curious as to how they decide what to pick up. Or if they pick up everything, and that's like, here, you sort through it later. I don't know. I'm curious to see how they're going to implement it, but it is definitely a good idea because there have been times where I'm like, ah, son of a bitch, they're purple up there. What the hell? You know, stuff like that. So it's a good idea. That was everything from my list. Um, kind of more broader aspects of the gameplay that I noticed. Uh, well, I guess, I don't know. Just stuff I really didn't write down, but looking back, I wish I did to talk about. Sanctuary 3, awesome. <laughs> Like, yes, a full ship with all the characters we know and love on it. Why we're all on this ship, why we're going places, I don't think we really fully know yet, but I don't care. They're all here. We're all going places. I'm excited. <laughs> and I even mentioned this in, uh, was it, like, my Who's Gonna Return, or who? I don't know. One of the things I did mention, like, so unless they turn Sanctuary into a ship, we're probably going to not have everyone with us. And they essentially turn Sanctuary into a ship. So, <laughs> here we go. We have everyone with us, and I love it. Um, another thing I noticed, uh, a lot of the character redesigns 
There's actually, I don't think there's any single one I was disappointed with. Every one I'm like, yep, I know exactly who that, you know, they weren't like so, they weren't so ridiculous where you couldn't tell where they were anymore, but they were different enough. You could tell they aged, uh, time has passed, and these are more mature versions of themselves. Now, mature being a strictly age-wise, hopefully not personality-wise. <laughs> Last thing I want to talk about is the Calypso Twins. Um, my last video when I talked about them, holy shit, I was wrong about so many things. Oh my god. I was thinking that, you know, all the religious propaganda stuff, that they were like, they saw themselves as gods. Like, that's what they were trying to get the message across. Like, I'm, I'm a siren. I can take powers. I can give powers. I I am a god. Treat me as a god. <laughs> that's that's what I thought was going on. And I mean she can so she can take the life force we learned uh from at least regular bandits. That's like kind of those crystal things where they kind of they, they mentioned it not too much. Um And I'm assuming the same will work for Siren powers. I don't see why it wouldn't and that still like from the trailer and everything that we've seen like the earlier trailers that's what seems to be happening. Um, I did not expect Twitch streamers. <laughs> I, I did, I, holy cow, I, I did not think that was going to be the way they're going with it. Like, the look of them, yeah, they looked younger, so they're going to be, like, more arrogant. But I didn't expect, uh, I did not expect that. Especially from her. Obviously, we didn't hear him talk yet, so we don't really know too much about his personality. But, holy cow, that girl... I, I'm scared for it. I really am because, uh, I don't know. It, it just it reminds me too much of oh, what Screwball from Spider-Man. If you remember her, she had a, a pretty good side mission in the base game. And I, don't get me wrong, in the base game I liked her. Like, yeah, she was one of those. All right, she's really annoying. Let's just shut her up. She was a good for side missions. But then when they brought her back in the DLC packs for those uh, her screwball challenges, I hated her. It was too much. She was too annoying. It was not fun. It was just annoying. And there was a thin line between annoying and, like, so annoying you love to hate him. Like, Handsome Jack, great example, you know. Yeah, he was annoying, but annoying and, like, funny and annoying to the point where you love to hate him. He wasn't like a, shut up, I just, I don't care what you have to say. I loved Handsome Jack. I I loved everything he had to say. I could see this... I could see the, the Clubso twins, at least the girl, getting very annoying if she's present throughout. If she's constantly chatting in her ear like Jack was, with that annoying... Not annoying voice. It wasn't an annoying voice, but just the way she talked was very annoying. The whole, like, ha ha, yeah, 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 yeah. That was absolutely terrible. But you know what I mean. Just the, the, I, I'm not a fan of Twitch streams, to be honest. So, the fact that they went with a Twitch streamer that sees herself as a god... <sighs> I... I don't know. It's... I, I, I'm excited to just to see what they go with it, because I trust them to make a good villain. But I can definitely see this being the, uh, the low point of the game, is the villain. Now again, that's just me talking right now. Don't actually have the game yet. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I really want to see where they go with it. But from what I've seen of her, I really feel like that is going to be the weak point. But that's just me. That's all I got to say about this one, guys. Um, Like I said, I only saw the Gearbox stream. Uh, I am looking forward to looking up some of the other streams that were recorded. Uh, because, obviously, just more Borderlands gameplay. Uh, I want. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I am scared, though, because they revealed a lot during this and all the trailers. They've revealed a lot, and we're still a few, quite a few months away. What are we, like, four, four and a half? Five, five, four, four and a half? I think four and a half months away from the actual uh, release date, and they're revealing a lot. Like, there's very, very few up things up for speculation at this point. So... I don't know. I'm just afraid they're going to reveal too much. They said it's a big game. There's only a scratch on the surface. But at the same time, they've given us a lot. So I'm, I'm scared, but I'm I'm also happy. <laughs> uh, so if there's anything else that you notice during these streams that uh, you want me to comment on or you think I, I missed out on, let me know. 
uh, and down in the comments because I, I do truly make these videos and have conversation with you guys. So if there's anything you agree with, disagree with, saw differently, think differently, whatever. Leave it down in the comments. Let's have a conversation. Um, check out my other channel, YC Games. It's one with the logo. And I will have, hopefully, first part of next week. Uh, part four of my 10-part series. And this time we're going to be talking about the guns. And this time we will be talking about the guns. Because I, I didn't, I was going to do that the last video. But I changed my mind because I knew we were getting this reveal. And there were still a lot of questions I had. And pretty much all those questions were answered. So now I can safely make a video talking about the guns. Um, yeah, so that'll be that video. If you have anything you want to add, any cool gun you saw in a trailer in the uh, gameplay, you're like, hey, this is a cool gun, you should talk about this, I'll talk about it. So just let me know down in the comments. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. See you on the next one. Keep your stick on the ice. We're all in this together.